The Community Shield, is it an overblown friendly or a real look at what's to come in the season ahead for the best two teams in England? Probably the former, but any opportunity to see Liverpool and Man City go toe-to-toe -to -toe is must-see TV. And I'm joined alongside James Bench to preview Saturday's showdown at the King Power Stadium. Que golazo begins right now. Hey everybody, welcome to Kigo Lasso. Yes, I am back. You all thought you were going to get rid of me because James Benj and Jonathan Johnson and Michael Lahoud and Fabrizio Romano were just delivering views over views, downloads over downloads. No, James Benj, I'm sorry to say, buddy, I'm back. How are you? Our peace and quiet has been ripped <laughs> apart. The, the... No more silence, James Benj. Exactly. No. No one is going to, there is now going to be no empty silences that jo Jonathan and I both attempt to fill at the same time. It is the, dialogue. The FC. awkward teenage silences are done. LME is back. And by the way, James Bench, JJ, and of course, uh, Michael Lahoud and Fabrizio Romano, you all did a fantastic job. And thank you everybody for helping us to grow this channel. We're nearly there to 20,000 subscribers, James Bench. I'm sure your Rodri interview, your Tom Davies interview has something to do with it. What do you think? Not the Tom Davis one. <laughs> Literally, I mean, so we did, I mean, obviously, like, you know, please go and watch it, guys, because Tom was great. But um, I was not because um, <laughs> I had made other plans for that day. So I was recording it in a coffee shop. Um, oh, and Des will say, Des, our producer, will tell you the Wi-Fi continually cut out. Um, Everton were great sports about all this. Whilst there's this awful, dreadful coffee shop music <laughs> playing in the background we and have a venti add... coffee for james yeah. bench <laughs> <laughs> and then to add insult to injury we were doing this everton had very kindly sorted this out for us the morning of their second preseason game against minnesota united which was wonderful but you know didn't leave us time to get this ready before the game happened and we so we all know what happened <laughs> exactly so i have all this stuff from Tom Davis talking about <laughs> how great the atmosphere is and how Everton are really ready for the new season. You go, well, I'm going to have to, re you know, play around with the framing of this a little bit. But uh, we got there in the end. He is phenomenal. Um, he, he's a great guy. Player. No, he's a great and guy. Blackpool, uh, so everything's fine. Well, there you go. And meanwhile, in the background, two coffees, cappuccinos for James Bench. <laughs> Great stuff. Great stuff, James Bench. And listen, everybody, welcome. Thank you again uh, for being part of the family. By the way, this is the last week to nominate Gego Lasso for the Best Sports Podcast category in the People's Choice Podcast Awards. We appreciate all you guys uh, and everything that you do for us, and we hope you enjoy our show enough to nominate us to advance to the final round. And to nominate Gego Lasso, go to podcastawards.com forward slash app forward slash sign up and then toggle down to the sports category. I know it sounds like a lot, but it really isn't. And it helps us a lot to grow this show that we give you for free, by the way. Link in description as well. James Bench, let's talk about the Community Shield. As we said in the intro, nobody really cares about it that much. I mean, Des Norris had to remind me who won it last season. It was except, Leicester City. Except Jose yeah. Mourinho. Yeah, oh, that's true. He won true. a treble, remember? Yeah, he loves it. He's got a room for it. You know what? That's a good point. I'm sorry, Jose Mourinho. You had it. You got the conference, and now you got the three times you won it. It must have been. I mean, yeah. you know, he was he was there. Yeah, I mean, well, listen. I, I think I think the thing is, if you win it, it's nice. It's a yeah. lovely day out. No, you especially... want to win it? Yeah, of course yeah. you do. And also, we're saying we don't care. But if Villa was in one of those Community Shields, I'd be all over it. I mean, if Villa was in any kind of final, I'd be all over it. But anyway. The community shield is here, and the reason why it's extra more interesting, James, is because obviously it's uh, the defending champions, Manchester City, against the runner-up Liverpool. Of course, uh, it's going to be a fantastic game, at least of talent. And obviously, they brought in a lot of new personnel. Well, one more than the other one, I guess. But you know, it's about setting the scene, setting the narrative for the season. At the very least, what these squads look like. Let's focus, James Bench, uh, first of all, on Man City. Because uh, obviously, coming in, defending champions, Erlen Haaland is in, Julian Alvarez, Calvin Phillips as well. Have City, have Man City, James Benz, first question for you. Have Man City already hit their stride with Erlen Haaland? Do you think this is it? Are we going to get some good fireworks here as we look ahead to Champions League set? Let's see if they can get it. But Pep Guardiola, Man City 2.0, I guess, 2022, 2023. What do you think? I mean, the. The joy of City's preseason so far is that it's very easy to see everything that Erling Haaland has done because so far he's played 40 minutes against Bayern Munich. He's received five passes. 
Uh, he's had one goal, uh, which is a very good start. So I think obviously it's it, and naturally it's early to to say that they've hit their stride with him. But I think what's clear is, at least off those forty minutes, got a caveat, it, and it's preseason and all those things. But that I, I I watched it all for my preview on Harland slash City, and like there's a lot to like. I think we all know about the goal scoring instincts. We know that City cut back FC, the team that love to make those deliveries into the six yard box it's going to be even better with Haaland that's why he likes scoring you know he's a real poacher we saw that with that goal against Bayern Munich and also now I mean he's not like he doesn't score a lot of headed goals but a guy that shape and size I mean now you don't just have to play those cutbacks along the ground you can clip it up and and Haaland will will get there what I really liked of the very limited football that, that we've seen of Haaland was the real commitment to the press I think that was the thing that like it's hard to have doubts about Haaland, but like the thing you say, well, this is what he has to improve. The two things were the, the link up play. Obviously, we've not had much of a chance to see that, but also what he was like off the ball. He he didn't press a lot. And especially kind of in that last season at, at Dortmund from the clips I've seen, it wasn't like the most intense of pressure. That really changed against Bayern. A couple of moments where he forced, you know, one forced Neuer, Manuel Neuer of all goalkeepers into a really nervy clearance. And then another where Dio Upamecano is just like punts the ball into safety because he sees this, you know, factory designed terminator of a football footballer coming at him. That stuff I really like the look of from if I'm a City fan, if I'm Pep Guardiola, because that if he can do that and then put the ball in the net, absolute dream. It looks like he is going to be a bit of an easier fit than we we thought. I am certain that City will ease him in. Obviously, like we you know, like we said, he's not played a lot in preseason. I guess he may well start this weekend. But if he does, he won't play the full ninety. Uh, and if he doesn't, I think he'll come off the bench maybe for yeah. penalties. Yeah, and I don't think uh, I think you hit the nail on the head with the two points that he has to work on. I don't think the pressing thing is going to be much of an issue. The more you work on the Pep Guardiola, the more you understand what to do when you don't have the ball. The link up play. Definitely going to improve. I mean, especially depending on how well Jack Grealish is going to do this season as well, James Bencher, you know, in accordance to, I guess, his, you know, partnership on the other side with Riyad Maris, of course, Phil Foden, et cetera. How do you see the other remaining uh, cast members? Julian Alvarez, I haven't even talked about, and you should know about him, Man City fans. You're going to get a lot of great things from him if he doesn't go on loan. I don't think he will. But what, what do you make of the supporting cast after Erlen Haaland? Because there's also been some exits, right? Uh, you know, so... What Ole has to rethink, I guess, recalibrate and what to expect uh, with this Blues, especially against Liverpool. Yeah, I mean, losing quite a bit of depth re- really on the wings. I mean, you you will know about Alvarez better than me. I, I know that by all accounts, he's a real talent and someone that could play out wide. Maybe he ends up do- being more of the sort of replacement for Gabriel Jesus. Mm. But, you know, let's not forget that that not just in, in the summer, but also in January, City let Ferran Torres go and didn't really replace him. And now they've let Raheem Sterling go. Um, Jesus has gone as well. Like the wing depth, the qualities there. And obviously, you know, you have players like Bernardo, De Bruyne, they can play out wide if that's what you want. Cole Palmer, another player that they think really highly of at City. But you're putting a lot of stock in, you're investing a lot more stock in Grealish after spending 100 million on him. I agree with that. I think the sort of tales of his like decline or were, were vastly over exaggerated. He was good last season. I think it just didn't translate to um, the scoreboard, didn't translate to goal contributions. But that was actually really because you saw him in particular holding that space out on the left flank. He was making room for Jao Cancelo to do his very weird Jao Cancelo things and do them wonderfully. Um, he, I think he will be a lot better this season. Let's not forget, you will remember the timeline better than me, but it wasn't like he had a lot of time in pre-season to to figure out Pep's instructions and obviously had also come from that emotionally draining Euros campaign, physically draining as well. So I think this could be a big season for Grealish and clearly Guardiola thinks the same or else, you know, we we would have seen a bit more action. And not not forgetting, James, uh, just adding to that point, not forgetting that he he left a club where he was clearly the only main focal target Mm. and magnet to a club that, He's not bad anymore. He's one of many. So now that he's more adjusted to that, I agree with you. I think it's going to be a way more productive, at least from a stats perspective, a really situation. You mentioned the youth as well from Man City, Cole, Cole Palmer. So what, one specific position, you mentioned Joao Cancelo, and I was noticing this preseason, James Bench, about 
what to do with Sinchenko's exit and what to do on that left back side. And I've seen Joao Cancelo now be on that side. Obviously, they are, they also have some uh, some youth players coming in to see. But you know, with Cucurella, perhaps uh, you know, at least as we're talking right now. Uh, not going to happen, Brighton rejecting the transfer request. What do you think is going to happen from that left side? Because that's my only question mark, I guess, for Man City heading in into this very early, early, early prediction stages. Well, I mean, like you say, at the moment with Kukure, it's up in the air. City know what they have to pay. I'm sure you and I agree. I think that's a fair price to pay. Not yeah. least because he's someone you could also play higher up the pitch as a, a true left winger. But anyway, that's by the by and you know could well be for all we know the speed at which transfers move at, at this time of year yeah by the time this well comes out, out he's already uh, doing the announcement absolutely doing his medical <laughs> um but obviously and zinchenko is a loss um a loss in terms of both his qualities in the dressing room i was speaking to someone who knows city better you know about his move to arsenal i think one of the things they said is he's just a great great character um losing that is a shame but i kind of think you can get a lot of what you need. Obviously, Cancelo, we know he's the left back. I think you can make a case he's the best in the world as a left back. And then maybe Nathan Ake, who yeah. they were considering letting go, but that never quite worked out with Chelsea. Maybe he comes across and let, let's remember, you know, you have Kyle Walker quite often masquerading as this third centre-back when City have possession. and Or, you know, he will kind of, he, he will be a bit more reserved to allow Cancelo to be attacking. Well, Carl Walker can certainly be the attacking fullback if you have Ake on the other side, and that's how you form your form your three, um, you know, in transition and and in build up. So I I think they will will assume they'll be fine uh, on that front as well. But I mean, you know, clearly having Kukurea welcome depth, and um, I think that's that's got to be the solution because also, I mean, Cancelo needs to cover at right back. I think it's really now you've got three players covering two positions. That to me is tight. We know Guardiola likes working with a small squad, but they're small and then they're sort of taking unnecessary risks. So, you know, I'm sure you agree. Probably going to end up just paying 45 million for Kukurea yeah. or whatever it takes. I think it's worth it. Especially if you're Man City in the need of that. I mean, they were using Josh Wilson, well, uh, made, Esprin, the young 19 year old left back as well. Yeah, exactly. I don't listen. There's, I don't know. I think Man City is just testing the very early waters of what Brighton will and won't accept. But to your point, he's a very good player and a very good type of player for Pep Guardiola. It'll be interesting to see what happens there. All right, let's uh, move on here because obviously Man City have to play somebody in this game, and that somebody is Liverpool uh, under Jurgen Klopp. I'm going to be very honest with you here, James Bench, and I, I don't want Liverpool fans to go too crazy on me, but this is a very difficult season to predict in terms of the top four, top six for me. Just just the action that's going on with other clubs. We don't know what United under Ten Hag could look like. Arsenal doing some great things as well. Don't say it. <laughs> You're not about on. to say that not Liverpool sticking. are going to... Not no. be in the top four, right? No, no, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that it's going to be a tougher journey for them to try and win this thing. And it will be a much harder to stay in that top four race. I think it will be difficult because I'm looking at this squad, James Bench, and they're one or two injuries from key players away from having a bit of a struggle. I'm not saying that they're done, but Darwin Nunez is a fantastic player. I've said it all along, but that midfield's a little worrying to me. What do you make of this Liverpool side as they start uh, their season? Yeah, I mean, you say a couple of injuries light. They are going to be going into the Community Shield, which Jurgen Klopp, by all accounts, isn't even very happy to be playing. Um, was yeah, complaining about it. having the longest season and the shortest break. Well, he yeah, hates it. He loses it, doesn't he? Does he? Well, yeah, yeah. But I mean, it's like, come on, Jurgen. Like, this is just. I don't you know want what? To be... You know the deal, Jurgen. Yeah. You haven't just showed up. You know that you have to play this game. Go ahead. Um, I, I, you are right. The midfield. I, I well. I think Curtis Jones and Harvey Elliott are two players that probably, maybe even Liverpool fans, and I know they will probably know better than I, but kind of my view is I think they, they get a bit underrated because they're not a new signing. They're not Jude Bellingham. who mm. or They're not Aurelian Chouameni. Uh, let's be honest. I think it seems like they're keeping their powder dry for, for a Bellingham uh, next summer rather That's than making right. a signing now. You're right, though. That it's going to be tight. I mean, again, you know, they've lost Origi. They've lost Mane, and they've replaced those two with Darwin Nunez and, you know, I think Nunez is great, really great. I'm going to have to caveat this carefully, but I think you do have to, when you kind of, 
you have to look at like what is the portfolio here, and we have a very a very good season with Almeria and a very very good season with Benfica, albeit a season with Benfica where when you look at the you know how much he outperformed his expected goals by, you are like this is a guy that averaged half an expected goal per ninety and was scoring a goal per ninety, mm. and then you kind of take the old Premier League tax on his uh, Portuguese league figures. And you start thinking, well, you know, no one, no one runs a hot streak like that forever. And I think it, I, I think it will take time. I think he will be great, but I, I don't think he'll be the immediate smash hit that Haaland is. And on the flip side, it could be a purposeful reminder for Roberto Firmino to show why he still belongs. So that could be one thing. I think I'm just looking more at that midfield because Naby Keita, I love him, but he is limited. Uh, you know, Diego Alcantara, again, I was I don't wish an injury on anybody, but if you get rid of that player in that midfield, the creativity runs a little bit. Jonathan Henderson isn't getting any younger. We know James Milner is definitely not getting any younger. And Fabinho as well, somebody that's so great. But again, uh, we know his portfolio is limited. I just, I'm not saying Liverpool's not going to be in the top four. That's ridiculous. I'm saying that it's going to be a harder journey for them. That's my thing. And, and, I, and I, what do you think? <sighs> Like, I agree, and I don't. I agree that it will be harder. Like, I think it will be harder for every team because I think that the yeah. teams in third, fourth, and uh, last season, where did they finish? Did they get sixth? Sixth, Man United. Or were they seventh? They were oh, sixth, Man I United. Sixth. I think they will all get better. I don't I don't want to sort of sidetrack it, but I, and I, I think these two teams will be pushed a bit more. But then, you know, these are probably two of the greatest teams that the English game has ever seen. I mean, certainly in terms of the points they accrue. Yeah. Um, like you say, with Liverpool, we saw the season before last that if those injuries do fall in the wrong spots, you know, they don't. And actually, we don't see that with City. And maybe, you know, if City got injuries to Bernardo, De Bruyne and Gundogan, which is kind of the defend, the midfield equivalent of what happened to Liverpool's defence uh, in the, the year they were defending the title, like maybe they would be struggling. I think you're right, though, that that they can ill afford injuries in that midfield. And what's the challenge there is they carry players that are injury prone. Like, you, I mean, Cater is the perfect Jurgen Klopp midfielder, but can't stay fit long enough. And like you say, you know, when players like Thiago Henderson, they are at the age where just naturally a lot of people will tell you they will be more susceptible to injuries. So that is my worry. I think like, you know, we're both in agreement that this team fully fit. It can be anyone in the world. It can 100%, win the title. One hundred percent, but it's not a sprint. It's a marathon, and that's the only thing that worries me a little bit. Having said that, you know Virgil Van Dijk was brought in January. Lucho Elias was brought in January. So you know this club adjusts. So it'll be interesting to see. Having let's talk about the game in itself. All right, let's let, let's talk about the predictions just for the Community Shield in itself. We know that Allison is out for this one as well from a Liverpool perspective, as well. I believe I'm reading reports of Emerick Laporte not being available. We'll have to stay updated on that one. But, I mean, it's the Community Shield. What do you expect? Yeah, I mean, the sort of, like a slightly lower pace, but high, still fairly high quality game. I mean, I don't know. I'll be honest. I'm not going to watch it. <laughs> I'm watching well, one game this weekend. Yeah, England, and Germany. And the Lionesses are going to win the Euros. Damn right. And I'm with you on that one. One million percent. But I think I think what I would accept, expect is, you know, the, it's just sort of lower pace, lower intensity, but still high quality fare. I mean, don't come into this thinking we're going to get another one of those 2-2 draws. I think, I mean, we might get that scoreline and I do think it will be like, you know, decided on penalties or whatever. But I think it will just be players easing themselves back into it, especially early on. I wonder as the game heats up, though, you know, these two teams, it's a... It's a respect. There's a lot of respect, and you know we were com we've complained, haven't we, in the past, or certainly you know sections of the media have complained that these two could just dislike each other a bit more, and they don't. But I think there there is certainly an, an extent to which there's a sort of a bit of competitive spike, and I think I don't think either of them will want to lose this game. So definitely, as the game goes along, I'm with yeah, you on that one. Yeah. I think it will warm up, and I think. Um, kind of, Go neither then. team will settle for a defeat. Give me that prediction, then. I've gone, I've gone one all, and then uh, I went Liverpool to win on penalties because obviously, if it's going for a penalty shootout, no sane human being <laughs> will ever pick 
it, it's baffling. No, no one can explain. I've never seen anyone explain why a squad that you might argue as the, is the like best collection of ball strikers in world football, but they can't kick the ball in the air. <laughs> Only in this time. Like, yeah. You know, sometimes that was questioned of the great Lionel Messi. You know, sometimes, you know, some things. Uh, I'm with you. I think it's going to go to extra time. One all seems about right. I don't. Oh, man. I Okay, I'm with you. I'll go with a Liverpool win as well. Despite of everything that I've just said uh, regarding of my worries for their immediate future, I think Liverpool has this one. Though, I will say, though, that aside from everything that we just talked about, this game is about those new players, wherever they come in, to kind of tell the entire fan base, this is why I'm here. And so I'm looking at Darwin Nunez, maybe, Erlen Haaland. But Julian Alvarez, to me, is going to do something special in this game. I, I, I'm excited to see what happens. Fabio Carvalho as well. Oh, now, of course. This is a, what, the Portuguese this player is that they bought from Fulham. Fun. That's right. Yeah, He could yeah. be really, really fun. Yeah. Um, I wish he was back at Fulham, really. Um, yeah. You guys can go and listen to our who's going to finish, which... Pre- uh, promoted team is going to struggle the most podcast to get my take on Fulham but um, he's going to I think he'll play quite a bit he was wonderful for them in the, the championship I think he'll get minutes and I'm sure we'll see him at the weekend I will probably now look and he's injured or something but I don't think <laughs> we will see all right well there you have it that was the community shield uh, James Bench here James by the way is away next week Bench uh, you know I hope you have a good time do you want to tell us where you're going or do you want to keep that quiet just so yeah I'm off to I'm off to the Amalfi Coast it's Italy it's August what more could you want um, but it, yeah so but don't worry if people that really want to read my stuff I have written an exorbitant number of well actually I've written six on the big six well it's a lot uh, preview it was quite a bit they took about a day each uh, i've written six previews uh, on the on the big premier league teams and um i've also updated my kit rankings which have created much rancor and rage among my twitter following which i'm well, delighted I mean, who by. is not good there you know if there's an argument to be made it's always about kit design so uh and listen you don't have to justify anything you've done your work my friend you enjoy amalfi coast but make sure that you read all his content james bench on the website at James Bench. By the way, thanks so much for listening to Kego Lasso. Please take a minute to nominate us for Best Sports Podcast in the People's Choice Podcast Awards. Link in the description. We're on Apple Pods, Spotify, Stitcher, anywhere you listen to your pods. We're also available as video. Subscribe to us on YouTube. We're nearly there to 20,000 subscribers. Make sure to visit YouTube at James Bench. Have a fantastic time in the Amafi Coast, my friend. Have a great time. Nice one. Thank you. And I will see you guys in time for, well, just as the new season is getting up and running. Hey, and just like you said, my friend, come on, Lionesses. All right, everybody. Have a great, great weekend. We'll see you next time. Que golazo pod, youtube.com forward slash que golazo. See you next time. Till then, bye-bye.